What's up guys? It's JW Bennett, uh, also known as the Bearded Bricky. Uh, getting ready to start a new foundation right here. It's going to be um, an elevated crawl space of about two feet. And um, we're just going to get ready to start laying it out and setting everything up. Just pretty much what we want to do is not tell you how to do your job, but how we do things around here in North Carolina on the Outer Banks. And uh, maybe you pick up some tips, maybe you pick up some tricks, help you be fast to help you do things a little bit better, make a little bit more money. That's the hope. But uh, we just came out to a new job right now. Uh, we poured the foundation yesterday. It was a two foot wide footer uh, by 10 inches thick with two pieces of number five rebar in it. And uh, it ended up being about 25 yards. Um, so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set all the brick up and uh, set up all the block. Also, I'm gonna remove any dirt that's gonna be in my way so I can get on a nice flat surface to be able to uh, lay my brick and block. And uh, we're gonna show you that. I'm gonna give you a little preview of what the job looks like before we start. And uh, then right before we get ready to start laying brick and block, what it looks like. And as we go through, just give you some, uh, give you some pointers. Hey, you might not like the way I do things. That's fine. I probably don't like the way you do things. That's fine too. You've got your way. I've got my way. It's not about who's right and wrong, but rather, hey, I just want to help you out, let you know how things, how we do things down here. And maybe you pick up a uh, um, tip or maybe you pick up a better way to do things or maybe you've got a way that you can let me know and uh, it'll help me go faster because it's just me out here. I work by myself. Uh, me and you'll come to find out I got a little uh, TX 1000 dingo we rock and roll we get brick laid and uh, we put block in the wall and uh, so just wanted to uh, say what's up it's the beard of Bricky Outer Banks North Carolina uh, hope you enjoy the videos talk to you soon This right here is my dingo. As you can see, it's got mortar and concrete and everything on it because we do a lot of work together. It does all my heavy lifting. I'm only 36 right now, but I plan on doing this till I die. So I'm gonna save my back a little bit, but it'll lift about a thousand pounds. It runs about four miles an hour. She rock and rolls. She takes my mortar everywhere. If I need to uh, wheelbarrow concrete, I don't do it anymore. I dingo the concrete. So. This right here is my back saver and my time saver. You'll see her rocking and rolling around this job all the time. All right, time to get into it. Time to flatten out a little bit of that dirt. We're gonna use a dingo right here, and then we're gonna put some brick and block around the job, and we're not gonna use our hands anymore. We're gonna use this dingo right here. All right, all right, guys, there you go. We've come through with the dingo, and we've knocked down the places where we're gonna be putting block at. I'll be setting block right here for this interior porch wall right here that goes from there to there. And then all the way over here, we'll have the same thing. We're going to be getting piers right here, three block high. You have piers all the way down there with eight inch CMUs right all through there. And then from here, where you see this, where there is a mound, two mounds of dirt, there will be an interior block wall there. And they actually separate the porches on these jobs. So you have piers on the front side of that wall and they will uh, separate the house from the porch as far as the wood goes. And we did get some dirt on the footing, but we did have to do a little hand labor we went in there with the trusty old shovel and our trusty old broom. We make sure that we clean up the footing so they're nice and clean so you get the best bond. We also, when we um, finish the top of the concrete, you say, wow, that looks pretty rough. Well, yeah, we want the mortar to adhere to that footing kind of like if you were setting tile so it gives you the best grip possible. Just a little things to try to give it a better job. So as you can see, we have all of our mounds 
where we're going to be laying block knocked out and so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a forks on our trusty old mr dingo and uh we're going to go and we're going to set block up all around the job all right talk to you in okay, just so i'm going to show you how i set up my pier blocks using my dingo right here all right so what you do is you've got the forks close enough to be able to go in between those holes right there and you take a block put it on there and slide it back take a block put it on there slide it back and i'm going to do this four different times to be able to get my base foundation ready so that when i get in there all i gotta do is slide them out and you may say well that's kind of lazy and i'm gonna say there's nothing lazy about bricklaying and they sent the lazy man to figure out how to do the job quicker and easier so that when it's all said and done i'll have my block set up i will have minimal hand time spent on it and i will have saved that much more energy for when i'm ready to lay brick and block because you only get so much energy a day why are you going to spend your time and your energy moving block when that doesn't make you money the only way you make money out here is by laying block Okay, little mess up, but it's hard to kind of work with one hand while you're holding the phone too. But you get the general gist of the idea. I was just able to move, what is that? 12 block, and I did it quicker. It was a whole lot less, less effort than what it would to move those by hand. So, I'm going back, trying to finish that in my peers. I'll talk to you in a little while. All right, guys, that right there is all of the eight inch block set up. Um, as you can see, if you look at that right there from my walls, I do the same thing. Instead of sliding them off one at a time, I just slide off the whole bit of four of them. So four by four, uh, three block high. And then I'm right here. I'm going to have a pier on each one of them. So that should take care of that. Also, in between them if you can see this i like to leave one two three three footprints and that gives me my pan space so i put a set of four down three footsteps another set of four three footsteps and then right there to finish it off i have two this is an interior house wall so it'll just be blocked not struck um, and then i'll have uh piers in front of it but that took about a total of an hour and 15 minutes to do. Uh, usually without the machine, if you were to do that by yourself and have to move over 400 block, it would take you probably two, two and a half 
hours, maybe even three, depending upon how you move. Um, it's a little bit warm out here today. It's probably about 87, not too bad, but uh, in the heat. But there you go. Uh, that's all my eight inch block set up. Took about an hour and a half with the dingo versus probably two and a half hours with uh, just me moving them. And that'd be moving pretty good. Right now I'm gonna go grab some lunch. And then after that, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how quick you can set up the brick. And that's real easy. No more brick tongs needed. Just me and the dingo. And I'll show you how quick it goes. Talk to you soon. Just wanted to show y'all that it is about 89 degrees out here. My truck's been sitting in the shade, so it hadn't been sitting in the sun. Uh, so 89 degrees. It's uh, it's not hot, but it feels pretty good outside. But you know, when it's warmer, um, you don't move things as quickly. So that's just showing you how much quicker I was able to move the block with the dingo versus uh, moving them by hand, having to get drinks. And I sweat a lot, and I barely even sweated while I was out there. There you go just climbed up to 90 that might be because i'm sitting in the sun but it's not too bad today uh i think over in australia that's probably about 32 degrees celsius i'm not sure i'll have to check on that but uh all right going to grab some lunch uh shout out to kevin's and coin jock if you ever uh in curry tuck hit up kevin's and coin jock they got the best food you're gonna have uh kind of crazy comes from a gas station but his wife sure knows how to cook all right talk to y'all in a little bit bye all right so we just got back from lunch, uh, meatball sub, potato salad, sweet tea, and a chocolate chip cookie. You always got to get the chocolate chip cookie. The sugar gives you the boost. But we're back and we're going to set out some brick like we uh, talked about beforehand. And uh, I'm gonna show you how quick it is with the dingo versus tonging every single one of them. Um, that would be 11 brick at a time. We're gonna be moving them a lot quicker than that. So, in just a few seconds, give me a second, I'm gonna switch over the video, we're gonna to get to it, and uh, I'll show you how we move brick with the dingo. All right. Okay, so here we go. If you look, I've readjusted my forks. They're a little bit wider. The reason we made them wider is to go in between those holes and be able to lift them a lot quicker. Um, these are triangle brick out of the Raleigh area, I believe. If you notice, they've done something really smart. They've uh, gone right here and they've double banded where you can actually lift up uh, half a cube at a time and uh, it actually works a whole lot better with the dingo when you're able to lift up half a cube at a time. So what we're going to come in here and do is we'll come in here and we're going to cut, cut these bands right here. So we cut, cut them bands right there and then we'll actually move these where I'm going to put three down and then I'll put the final two down and we'll do the same thing. Put three, three down, use our three foot um, spacing method for our pan, put two down and we'll do that for the entire length of the wall. And when we do that, that generally gives us enough brick for the wall. We'll try to put them close enough too because Again, bricklaying is about um, getting as much in as possible at a high quality rate. And you don't get paid for moving things. So the further your brick are away from you, um, the further you have to reach, the more time it takes for you to get brick in the wall. Of course, we don't want to be too tight where we don't have any uh, where to move. But at the same time, we want to be able to get those brick in this wall as fast as clean and as high quality as possible so right now you see we got no brick on anything it is right now it is about 1 30 in the afternoon you'll see that i'm not going to put all the brick up there for reasons and i'll let you know why so i'm going to check back in with you all after i'm done spacing everything and tell you what the time is and then you can decide wow is that a lot of save time or meh I don't really care I'd rather have my five guys go out there pay them to do that and do it in probably less time or more time than what it takes for me to do it with Dingo. Alright talk to y'all in just a little bit.
right, so there it is. The time right now is two o'clock. So for me to set out right around 3,400 brick, it took 30 minutes. Now, you'll say, why isn't brick right there? Well, I gotta pull my line through there to be able to get my measurements for my walls. So I don't wanna put stuff in the way of me being able to get my measurements right. Measurements are important. We actually like to have square houses that have the correct measurements on it. And same thing with the uh, side walls right here. I go ahead and just put stuff up to where that corner is and then leave those out. Cause like I just showed you, I moved um, 3,400 brick in 30 minutes. I can move, what's that wall gonna take? Maybe 150? I move 150 in two minutes. And then I'll move those to be able to be there. Like you see, we want a bit of a pad, so some of the stuff's leaning backwards. We'll just deal with that, that's okay. So that's it right there. That's how I set a job up. As you can see, not perfect. That's okay. But uh, as a great YouTuber Concrete Ninja says, if you're not making mistakes, you're not doing nothing. And uh, I completely agree with him that uh, if you're working your rear end off and you're out here doing what you love and loving what you do and working hard, trying to make a good, honest living, you're going to make mistakes from time to time. But uh, you own up to them, you fix them, and uh, you're all the better for it at the end. So, this is Friday. Um, hope everybody enjoys their weekend. This is how I set up a footing, or excuse me, set up a foundation with the brick in the block. It took me about a about two hours to set up a little over uh, 3,000 brick and right around 400 block. That would take a, quite a bit just by myself, so I saved some time. Monday we're going to come back and uh, I'm going to show you a couple more little tricks that I've learned. One, uh, thanks to my buddy Dale Copeland on uh, how to stay cool because uh, the cooler you stay, the faster you lay. And like I said, you don't get paid for travel out here. You only get paid for what goes in the wall and what goes in the wall right. That being said, this is uh, J.W. Bennett, the uh, bearded bricky on a Friday. Hope everybody enjoys their weekend. Uh, give me a comment, uh, hit the subscribe button, and also hit the bell button for notifications. Like I said, we're gonna be doing things and showing you things on how we do it around here. Hopefully it helps you out a little bit. If you uh, would, you wanna leave a little comment on how you think I could do things better, that's great. If you like the way I do things, give me a comment. Uh, let me know you like it. But uh, everybody enjoy their weekend. And um, we'll see you on Monday.